there's military people here, so correct me. That my jargon might be wrong. Um, but they really got slaughtered. So my wife and I were taking the stuff out of our car, just come from Brooklyn, and all of a sudden we see a bunch of Union troops coming up the street. <laughs> we see a bunch of Confederate troops coming down the street. And then the Union troops start running down, I'm dying! It's murder! And my wife is like, okay, let's get out of here. Like, how is it? She's from Italy, Brooklyn, I mean, it was crazy. So that gives you an idea of Fredericksburg and their relationship to their past. It's deep, and it's resounding. And of course it would be in the South, right? The Civil War is a kind of marked moment for their notion of identity for the last 150 years. Now, this is interesting because a, a history site that was run by Jeff McClarkin, who's a historian, and he's actually a Civil War historian, had his actual students go to Fredericksburg and the surrounding counties, Stafford and Spotsylvania. And they went out, they took images of these historical markers, and they did research on them. And they did good research. They went into the libraries, they found very specific um, intellectual scholarly work on each of these, and they created a map and a resource that anyone could find that they could use. This site gets hit about 15 to 20,000 times a month, and it's where our community said, oh wait, UNW is actually doing stuff for the community. Like up until then, there was no kind of evidence of our learning and how that learning informed the community. This actually, for the community, really brought us together. These resources that were out there and openly available were being used by people in the Fredericksburg community. And we started to be thought of, not only our faculty, but our students as a resource. Which, I think, is what this open publishing pop, uh, platform made possible. Here's another example. This is Professor Marjorie R. Uh, Marjorie A, who teaches our history. She has an interesting site where she has her students create a journal for art history. They do particular research on the city of Venice. And they create this as a journal. Well, this is interesting because while they're creating, they're doing their work, they blog it. They talk about their research, kind of like a research journal. And one of the things they talked about is, how many of you, anyone ever been to Venice? Okay, so if you see a beautiful place, right? They got these old majestic buildings. Well, if you've gone there over the last 10 years, you might have seen one of those big buildings covered in a big ad. They do is they basically treat it like a girdle. They cover the whole thing with like a big Calvin Klein ad. And people and the students on this block were going crazy. This is ridiculous. You know, this is an insult to our aesthetic of the whole space. And so they were really kind of ranting on the block. Well, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the kind of chief advertising executive for this company, who was actually in Britain, gets on the block and says, you guys don't understand. This is how we fund the work. If you didn't have that ad, then these old, beautiful buildings wouldn't be restored. And what kind of followed was this long, kind of drawn out conversation between this ad executive and his students. And how did the ad executive find this? They found it because it was on the open web. If you kind of have a Google notification for yourself, if you're searching specific things, chances are, if you search Venice, this is going to get hit. I don't know why, this site gets close to 50,000 views a month, which is just astounding. When I tell students that, they're like, what? Our little papers? And yes. Your papers, the students are programming the web, and they're making it good and better, right? It's like we are making the web a better place by letting us and our students program. I believe that. You know, that's why I do this. Now, I'm actually going to, this is an interactive part. And okay, I, gotta, I, gotta, I want you to search the term banned art. But I don't want you to go to the image search. Because if Maplethorpe comes up or something, I don't want to be held responsible. So go band off, but keep it web, not image. Because images could take you to crazy places that I don't know if you want to see. Stand, search the term band space art. OK? Band, like B-A-N-N-E-D. Like you're banned. Oh. Banished. You're banned. OK. So, and don't look at the images. Then <laughs> are no images, good? You get an iPhone. We are? Okay, good. Yeah, you'll get an iPhone. And if you do it, that's fine. Just know that this claim has been made. All right. What happens when you search band art? What's the first search result? You guys. down. The first thing you find when you search band art is a UMW blog, which is a course site run by Nina Mikulewski, where her and her students discuss the politics around banned arts over the last hundred years. I think that's fascinating. I don't know why we're the top search.
search. I don't know if it's because we get so many links from other sites, how the Google algorithm actually works, but our site is the top result. Now, I always thought about this. I've talked to folks at CUNY. I don't know if you know the City University of New York. They have a kind of band of colleges much like yours, 22 different colleges all around the city. I've talked to Maricopa Community Colleges, right? They're a similar situation, although they're localized to Phoenix. They have 13, 14 universities. I don't know if they have as many. But I always thought about this. If you had an install, whether it be WordPress or whatever, where you had faculty and students programming this space at the 34 different spaces, and it was linked to one central site, and you started doing your work out in the open through spaces like that, and then people started to search for stuff. With the thousands of students and faculty you have in the system, how much would you start promoting the work you did? How much would the good work you're doing at your universities start to inform the web? Right? And like you do with Angel, and like you do with Tegrity or Blackboard Collaborate, you can have a site like WordPress or whatever that each of your universities ran, but was one major site. Thousands of incoming links. And you would start to frame the experience across these disparate spaces. Right? I'm interested in that. It's something I've been trying to promote to big university systems. Like, you don't even know the power you have. The power in numbers on the web is real. It cannot be discounted. Because the more links you have coming, the more promotion you have. We only have four or 5,000 people on your Libby blogs. And look at the results we have. You had 350,000. You get it. You would own Google. They would have to pay you money. They say, oh, yeah, it's the Washington State Community College. You've got to throw them out some money to keep them down in the ranks. <laughs> right? You overrun the system. Yes? Did you have your hand up? Oh, okay. But may I? Yes, please. Okay, but with that power, uh, and I'm just saying, absolutely, okay, because I'm, I'm with you, I advocate it. But with that power, there are certain camps that want to control that power well, and control the access. And that's always been the problem with people trying to control the web, right? I mean, you try and control the access on the web, and it usually doesn't end very well for the person trying to control it. I mean, right, look what happened in Tehran, for example, when they had the Iranian election, right? The attempt to control the internet and to shut it down in Tehran during that election, what did it ultimately relate to? Just proxies set up in Canada, in the US, in Europe, where other people could access the internet. And one of the real things that kind of I thought was interesting is when you had those proxies and you had Twitter, the Iranian election blow up on Twitter, and they kind of see the state that's happening in Iran, what I thought was most fascinating and most frightening is you had no idea at one point where the information was coming from. You had no idea who was saying what, whether it was kind of the Iranian government just misleading people so they go certain places so they capture them, or was it real freedom fighters, whatever we want to talk about. That's why I think the idea of doing this under a dot edu across several institutions where you have, by your relationship, a certain amount of authority, respect, and trust puts you in a very different situation to share. I mean, I think that's why open education is happening at the universities right now. You've established your trust with the community. They trust you because you educate them. They trust you because what you've done has proven to be very, very influential and powerful for them. I think that's something we can use and really, I don't want to say exploit, because it's not exploited. Right. You know what I mean? It's something better. So I want you to do another thing. Well, this is an interesting story. And this is kind of our stories of open learning on the web. Marie McAllister, who teaches English at the University of Mary Washington, is kind of a big fan of read poetry. And so she had her students start reading poetry from the 18th century. They got on there. They got particular poems, whether it be um, uh, Afra Bain or Anne Bradstreet, Robert Burns, etc. And they would read them, record them, and then put them up. Again, this becomes a resource that might be the most definitive resource of 18th century red poems on the web, created by a bunch of UMW students, and to the point where um, there's other sites that are anthologizing the work that students did here. It's just bizarre. More than that, and I find this crazy, we started to realize like there was a real uptake in traffic on this site. So, you know, Marie McAllister can change, check her own Google Analytics. So she's like, for some reason, it went from like 100 hits a day to like 1,000. And we're like, huh, I wonder why. So we did some investigating, and it was actually because a school in Saudi Arabia was using this site to teach the students how to speak English.